Um, and now you can ask. Okay, so you have you have this definable group, right? So it's it's some you know, some variety of objects uh, and uh, and another variety of morphisms. So if you take uh, so for, for example, yeah, in in uh, if you're talking about ACF, if your T is ACF, you can take a field and you can ask what what does it mean to what is the point of uh, this group, right? So in general, if A is a T structure. Uh, then G of A is some actual groupoid. Okay, so then you know, like you have a, you have an algebraic group. You, you take its points in some field, you get some actual group. So here we get some actual groupoid. So, so you can ask, what is this groupoid? Well, what does it mean? And so the proposition here is that G of A uh, is well, essentially equivalent uh, to the category of the Carvacio Interpretations of T field in T A. Okay. We're, so just just to check that I'm following it. We're, we're, we're essentially. If you didn't want to write it, you would have to say something like, okay, so G of A has these two maps, two, two O. So, so every point there gives me two different fiber functors with values in A together with something like isomorphism between them, or? Uh, okay, so, okay let, let's write it more explicitly. Uh, so, yes. IA. So G. Remember, G con consists of these two things, O and A, right? So I, for any A in O of A, uh, we have an interpretation WA from T tilde to TA. Okay? And if um, A B Now H, okay, so H, A, B. Now this is a, this is a, a definable set again, right? So it's the definable set of all morphisms from A to B, and it's definable over A. So I can ask what is the set of points of this over some other structure B containing A. And the answer is that it's, uh, is the, this is the B definable isomorphisms from WA to WB. Okay? Okay. 
Okay, and so now I can I can explain. Uh, now now it's it's easy actually to explain uh, how a how to prove uh, this this theorem from a, a Julia Gomczynski and, and of Chinikov. Namely, what we want. Remember what we want is. Uh, want a Picard ratio uh, Picard ratio structure over CK, right? Which is the same as a Picard ratio interpretation uh, over CK. Did I say here? Yeah, so this is a Pico this is always a Picard Vesier interpreter. Okay, so this is the same as a point, a CK point of uh, O. So that's what we're looking for. We're looking for a, a, a CK point of O. Now, what we have is we have a Picard's interpretation over K. Right? That's what I explained before. So, how Picard's interpretation W over K, so which is the same as a K point of uh, O. And now we are done because uh, O is a O is a is a set defined over CK. So uh, because we we are assuming that any uh, definable set over CK that has a point in K has a point in CK. So we are done by existential proof. And again, this is this is precisely the the proof of in in the Linz, uh, paper, except it, it just works in in. Uh, in this completely abstract setting. Yes? So, for this to work, you need O to be somehow quantified predefinable. Yes, but it's definable, it's definable in ACR. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. I meant in the abstract setting. I mean, yeah, I mean, in the abstract setting, we only have things in five. I mean, we, we only consider elementary extensions, right? So, or, or, okay, I, I, I guess it, so, so I, th there's no theorem that I can formulate. Uh, or at least I, I don't know how to formulate a, 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 an interesting theorem that, that is completely inside the, the abstract setting. Okay. So, uh, but but you see what what you need to to make this machinery work. You, I mean, basically you need this uh, um, you need you need this you need you need the existential closure assumption, and you need this you need to construct. I mean, the only thing that depends on on something about fields is is this uh, interpretation, uh, this canonical interpretation over K, uh, which uses uh, the fact that you have the risky closure, and but. Once you're done with that, it's, uh, it's basically completely abstract. So that's uh, that's that. Um, I don't know what I should do now. I, I mean, I, I can indicate perhaps. Uh, I mean, I started uh, by by talking about these other things. That uh, I mean, the question of whether whether 
the CoverCO extension itself is, 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 uh, has, has some nice properties. Uh, so this, is, uh, this is also uses the same idea. Uh, and also the uniqueness. I mean, the uniqueness is, is really... Um, okay, one, one needs to say a bit more, but um, if, if the theory... If T is, uh, so, so that, that's also something, uh, something from Woody. So, uh, so actually, the, if, you, if your theory T, the base theory is complete, so we're, we're trying to classify, uh, so complete means that, that every, or every, every question you can answer, you can ask is decided. Um, so uh, then, the, then the internal covers uh, correspond to connected groups. Um, so, uh, yeah, and, and, then, and then basically the, the assumption that I had uh, in, in this theorem that, in, uh, that, that I stated is that you are working, but okay, what, what does it mean connected? Connected means that if you look at points in a model, then, then you get a connected group of them. Of course, if you look at, at points in some, in some smaller structure, then, then you, you get something in general disconnected. But the assumption that I had was that I'm working over a model, over a model of that model companion, which, uh, which, which requires some discussion. But, uh, uh, but basically, once you're in the model, you, you, you have uh, mesomorphism. Um, yeah, so uh, I mean, I can say a few words about, about uh, what to do with, with, with these this extra requirements. That, uh, to, to get a Picard-Visio extension uh, with particular properties, but uh, I mean, uh, okay, in one sentence, all it is is you have this groupoid, you have this set of objects, and, and, and now uh, you can ask, what, what do you know about this set? So, so some of them, some of this, uh, so each, each, ele each element in the, in the set of objects gives you some uh, Picard-Visio interpretation, which gives you some peak overseer structure. Now you can ask, uh, you're asking something about this peak overseer structure. You want it to have a particular property, namely that it satisfies some theory. You can ask which of the, which of the elements of O uh, have this property that, that, that the, the corresponding structure satisfies the, the theory S. And the answer is that this set itself is definable. So there is a formula, uh, a, a, a definable subset of, of O uh, which is already not quantifier free definable, um, which which singles out all the uh, all the ones that that give you a Picard-Visio extension with with the property that you want, and then it's it's basically the same the same process. You just uh, you just notice that uh, that, that this canonical uh, Picard-Visio interpretation. Uh, gives you gives you a structure with this type, so you have a point there, and, and, and then you descend. Uh, I mean, maybe just just to explain this in a, in the particular example that I gave. Yeah, maybe it's good to actually look at some examples. Um, right. So. Uh, so let's look at let's look at this equation. Uh, so in this case, the the set of uh, I can tell you what the groupoid is. So the groupoid, the object, is just um, a one minus zero. Okay. And the morphism is the set of uh, A, B, C such that um, A and C squared is equal to B. Okay? And it projects to O cross O by sending uh, this to AB. Okay, 
and so you see if A and B are equal, then you, then you just get the, uh, the group of size 2, which is what you expect. Right? This is the, yeah, so maybe I, maybe I should also mention that if this group it has the property that if you, uh, if you look at an object over the base and you look at its, at its automorphisms, this is precisely isomorphic to the Galois group of the equation. So, um, yeah, so that's what you see here. And, well, and now, in, instead of looking at it, instead of looking at this structure, so, so this is, this is uh, connected in ACF, right? So if you have any A and B, uh, in, a, in an algebraically closed field, it will have it, the the the, uh, the quotient will have a square root, and so you'll have a morphism from A to B. If you look at a field where, where B over A doesn't have a square root, then then over that field they're not isomorphic, even though the um, even even though the the, the Picard extensions the, themselves are defined over A. And B. Uh, and in particular, you can look at you can look at uh, what happens in a real closed field. So in a real closed field, uh, A and B will be in the same connected component precisely if they have the same sign. Okay, so you have two connected components which exactly correspond to the to the two to the two different ways of embedding of of deciding whether T is uh, positive or negative. Okay, so that's, that, that somehow codes the way the uniqueness fails, but, but if, if T, uh, if you have two extensions where T is uh, embedded in the same way, in terms of the order, then, then you will have, uh, then, then they will correspond to A and B, which, which sit in the same connected component, and then they will be isomorphic. Um, okay? Mm -hmm. um, because this, this A and B correspond to sort of taking the solution square root of t and, and specializing it to yes. square root of A, square root of t and uh, B. And, and if A and B didn't differ multiplicatively by square, then they couldn't be isomorphic. Exactly. Yes. Uh -huh. But then over the complex numbers, everything okay. becomes isomorphic. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Um, okay, so that's, that's a, I mean, that, this basically explains it. I don't know if there's a point to... I mean, I can, I can, I can explain more rigorously what's going on, or, or I can go into the details of something else. I, I, I had a sort of naive question that's probably in the um, example already, but um, um, okay. So in, 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 in this case, these are all real varieties, right? And uh, the, I mean this. Uh, well, this, this is. Yeah. I want, yeah. Um, so if I look at the complex points, I have this action of, of the Galo group of just C over R. Could it be that the property being form formally real corresponds exactly to the to the fixed points in the torsor on their complex conjugation? Yeah. So I mean, so this is uh, uh, yeah. I, I, I mean, the, the real points of right, the, uh, almost by definition, the oh. uh -huh. the real points of of R. The, the, the real points of H is the is is exactly H of C, uh, fixed by complex conjugation. So okay, yeah, exactly. So whatever your property was, you you would sort of expect it to to, to the the fiber functors that define extensions that have that property might usually be defined by the kind of same property but applied to H as a variety. Uh, if, Sorry. Yes. Okay. So yeah. So so everything commutes with with the uh, that, that's part of the of one of these statements. Everything commutes. Right. So I, I said that I said yeah I had this proposition that um, G of A uh, is essentially the same as the uh, um, interpretations of T till in T A. Right, the Picard-Vessier interpretations, and but but uh, I mean the full statement is that it also comm I mean, it commutes with the Galois mm -hmm. action on both sides. Uh -huh. How, can you explain where do you get AC squared equals B from? How do you compute it? 
Yes. Okay. So this is yeah, so, the, the, so this goes into this goes into into the question of what, what is the connection between uh, internal covers and uh, and definable group points. Yeah. Um, Incidentally, was there a uh, Khrushchevsky reference for, for that theory? Yes, so that's, uh, it's called, uh, I don't remember exactly, but uh, I think it's Rupoid uh, Imaginaries. Actually, but uh, yeah, uh, all the stuff that I'm talking about is is really in the beginning of that paper, and then there's some other things that, uh, that at least uh, I did not discuss. Uh, okay, uh, so what did I want? So. Uh, Okay, let me maybe I'll, maybe I'll explain it in the in the special case of, of differential equations. Oh, just this okay. one is fine. Or just okay. So this one. Uh, no, no, no. I'm not asking you for a general algorithm. I'm just saying. Okay, but it's it's as as no, easy uh, to or I difficult. I also would like to see the connection between internal covers and groupoids, if you have time. Yeah. So, but uh, okay. So let me do. Let me say it in general. Um, so what does it mean that you have an internal cover? Uh, it means that you that uh, you have this set, K. Okay. So remember we have uh, I of T K zero of T field K, which is a by interpretation. So Let's just work. So, so, so let's just take a particular definable set here, which we call Q. And so the fact that we have an interpretation means that uh, we look at um, I of W of Q. So and this is isomorphic, definably isomorphic over k to q. Okay, so more, more details, we have some function f, which, de which uses parameters for k, uh, from this to a, a definable isomorphism like that. Okay? Um, so now this f has some parameters, which are in k, and these parameters come from some definable set, right? So, uh, so there is a, so an, another way to say it, if I don't want to, if I don't want to assume that I have parameters, I can say that I have a family of, of definable isomorphism, okay? Mm -hmm. So, hence, there is, a definable set X in detail and um, definable family of bijections F X cross Q uh, from X cross, okay, so let's call this one C. From X cross C to Q. Okay? And this is already defined without parameters. So what I mean by this is that I have, I can, 
uh, if I take any uh, element here, uh, then, uh, then I get some function from C to Q, and this function is a bijection. And then I have uh, all kinds of compatibilities, but I want to ignore this for a moment. Uh, and so if, if I look, So now, um, okay. So for each, so, so now for each element in X, I get this bijection, right? And now I can start composing them. So if let's say A, B uh, are in X, so now I have F A from C to Q and F B from C to Q. And so I get um, F, uh, which we want, uh, FB inverse composed with FA. Okay? Uh, and this is from C to C. Yeah. Okay? Now, actually, um, this is not precisely correct because um, it could be that it could be that for different parameters I uh, can't compose. sorry for, for different parameters the the set I have here is different mm -hmm. so it's some set but it's some set that depends on uh, a and B and which is definable from a and B so actually this is from CA to some other set CB okay. what do you mean by CA the fiber so uh, I mean, so so each for each a for each element here, I, I, I might have this bijection to a different set, but all of these sets are are sitting inside our definable sets here. Okay. But now uh, one of the things I said is that uh, this so these are sets these are definable sets that 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 are def definable here. And one of the one of the assumptions that I'm uh, uh, didn't, didn't mention, but but I said it is that uh, every set that is definable here can be defined using parameters just from from here. So this is uh, right. So if you think about uh, our example, uh, these C A and C B are are definable sets in the constants. Okay, in there's some in the inside the constants. Inside the constants. And so every every definable set in the constants can be defined using the constants. Yeah. Okay. So these are so even though it looks like these sets are definable yeah. over a and b, which are outside oh, the constant, right, right. in you, fact they are definable yeah. over the constants. Right. And so what what is it that you need in order to to define them? Yeah. Uh, one thing you can do is is you can just look at the set of all. So, okay, another thing is that the, this is algebraic geometry, right? So, um, so this, this, uh, this uh, variety or definable set has some code, some minimal thing over which it is defined. And then once, if you, if, if you look at this code, this code is, is, is actually an element of the field or a tuple in the field, which is defined from A to, from, from A, okay? Uh, Okay, so the situation is that to define CA, uh, there is some function, uh, which function definable in T tilde, which when I apply it, so it's 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 definable in T tilde, but it has values in in something that sits inside T, so in the so in our example in the constants, and if I apply uh, this function to A, I, I get the parameter over which this set is defined. So, so what, okay, so, so maybe I don't know what is, the, what is that function, but one thing I could do is I can just look at all, of, all functions uh, from, consider all functions 
from X to C, okay? And it turns out, again, because of various properties, that, that in fact, finitely many functions give you, already give you the information. So this is equivalent, essentially, to considering just one function, F, from X to some C to the N. Okay? And so this function will have the property that uh, CA, so remember A is here, so E is defined, and it's actually the canonical parameter of CA uh, is uh, F of A. Okay? And now, and now the group are you? Is that the canonical base? Or? Yes, that's okay. so. Yeah, okay. So, so more formally, I consider the space of type, the space of types of right. elements of X over C, yeah. and so so these are some. This is some space of types, and actually the objects of the groupoids are the are, are the these types. It's, this, it's exactly the the set of types. But the fact that it's a definable set in C is is yeah. the fact that you have canonical bases right. sitting inside C. Right. But this is, this is somehow a more concrete uh, explanation of this. So this is the canonical base of the type of A over C. Uh, and this is the set of objects of the group. Okay, so the objects, you can think of them, so conceptually, you should think about them as, as, as types of elements of X over C, but to see that they are, uh, that they are a definable set in, in C uh, is just the image of X under F. Yeah. Okay, and then what are the morphisms? The morphisms are, are exactly uh, the things that you obtain this way, uh, yeah. which, are, which are, I mean, another way to say it is that they're, they're, uh, they're just definable maps from, from, the, from this type to this type. In, in the cover. Uh, okay, so now you just so so this is uh, I mean this is fairly explicit. Yeah. So what you okay? So what what is X by the way in the example of, of linear differential equations is, is just a set of bases. Okay, if you because because we said that to give uh, to give this bijection uh, we need to um, we need to give a basis. Um, and, and and so now what what we have to do is exactly to look at at the, all the definable functions from the set of bases to the constants. Okay, so in the case of uh, this equation, um, we have the function f of x is equal to x square over t. Right, that's the function that we started with, and that's it. And so, what is the image of this function? It's if you if you restrict to the set of bases, which is in this case the set of non-zero elements, it's just uh, what I wrote there. So it's the fine line minus zero. And, uh, and if you look, oh, sorry. And this is where the a b equals c squared is coming. So that's the that's the where the a that that's where. And, and then what, what are the morphisms you, you, you have to ask? Um, suppose you have uh, x squared over t is equal to a, and then um, y squared over t is equal to b, and then, and then you just, uh, just divide and you see that, uh, so, so the morphisms are, are exactly x over y squared, uh, equal to a over b. Um, okay, so that's. A so if you can you think of the set of bases as a set of a moving frame uh, yes, matrix? Yes, and, yeah, and yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So this is a. Uh, uh, yeah. we, we talked about this in the yeah, work. Yeah, yeah. This is this is very yeah, similar. Yeah. Yeah. But again, the the nice thing is it it works in. Completely completely abstract uh, yeah. situation. I mean, this, this idea is, is, is uh, somehow uh, has, has a longer history than, than this, but the, the group interpretation is, is in this paper. And, yeah, that's uh, 
That's and nice. The previous game started with Wazai. It's a nice paper. Who wants to join the workshop? Studying that paper. People are serious about what they do for. Yeah, I'm certainly serious. You've got three weeks. Well, I'm going to do something. When did you come back? When did you come back? Really, really nice. Closed condition. That's very nice too. That yeah. So that, that's a bit more. It's yeah, a bit, what, a bit well, we more did the theory. prime choice theory. We had this unfortunate condition on the field of constants of the Galois derivation that would be differentially closed. But then when when Alexei and, and uh, Rachinsky and Gilles, um wrote their paper, they changed it to I think existentially closed in the extension, which is a a much tractable condition on the constants. Uh huh. Yeah. But you just have to look at a particular. Right. Yeah. Yeah. extension. This huge, humongous field. Mm. Really smaller fields. Lots of fields have that set by that condition. Right. Okay. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Very much more natural. Well, I don't know. I, for me, actually, the only, the only way I know how to. How to check that something is ex existentially closed in something else is, is just to, you know, to, to assume that the smaller thing is a model of the model companion. So, uh, uh, I mean, okay. I mean, uh, yeah. But but I guess in examples you could you could uh, yeah. I mean, uh, okay. Of course, in, in you could check this, you know, to formally real condition in, in particular yeah, examples. That's very nice. Do you go over the first example? Example prime equals minus six. Oh, yeah, over uh, <laughs> over this field of uh, out here, uh, and then you take two two different pick up this extension, right? Ah, that, that's this. Ah, the second example. Wait, which one? Maybe uh, you Yeah. So this is. I mean, it, this yeah, is actually the part that I, I didn't second, really talk about. But either first or second was fine. Okay. I mean. Uh, so, uh, so this, uh, so there was this example uh, over the yeah. um, okay, SS, SS prime. Yeah, oh, the, the first yeah, example. Let's, let's, do the the first. let's do the first one. The okay. First one? Uh, over uh, our SS prime. Yeah. Um, I mean, so here. Um, so what goes wrong? I mean, in this theory here. Yeah, I mean, one has to one has to compute. Uh, I mean, yeah, one has to compute the set of objects, but it's it's right. probably something like like that equation, right? So so maybe the set of objects is given by this equation. So right. <coughs> so you could imagine. Okay, I, I, I didn't compute, but this is u x squared plus y squared plus u. It's a four at the beginning. It's four. Oh, sorry. A four. Oh, four plus four. All right. All right. That's four. That's uh, yeah, I was thinking of this. So remember, this is yeah. So this is this is an equation that has oh, okay. a solution in in right, this right. field. Yeah. So that's an ellipse. But doesn't have a solution in R. So right, right, right. So you know, so the, the canonical interpretation will give you this point here, and the, and then mm -hmm. you just okay. you just cannot conclude anything. That equation would be part of the part of the T tutor structure, is right? So this this equation will it sits inside. Is that so, so, it, it, so this, you know, despite despite the fact that this is the field, we still have the T is still ACF, right? T but it's ACF R, right? We, so it means that we have constant symbols for R. Okay. Uh, but then 
uh, and t tilde is, is just is this equation. Okay, so it's q, this particular q, and uh, c. So again, this has constants for the reals. Uh, but it has some, I mean, it has some more structure. So it has some, some definable sets here, definable functions. Um, and now, what, what, so this is, this is this, right? CR and it, it, this is the same theory. So in here, you have this definable set. Okay? And I, I'm just guessing that, that, that this would be the set of objects. So if you imagine that this is the set of objects, this sits here. This sits in ACF, but it just doesn't have points over, over, the, over the base, over, over the reals. So this is a definable, this, this is uh, the, the definable set of objects, again, maybe. Um, of the ACFR definable group of <coughs> corresponding uh, to this particular pattern. So here X and Y are just two different solutions of your Q, right? No, so x and y, so this is a definable, so, so it's a formula. You think about this as a formula here. Yeah. So, uh, so points, solutions of this would course in some big, maybe, it, field, maybe it, big field. I mean, this is in C square, right? Right, this is, okay. this is inside C square. C square. So solution, so if, if you give me a point here, mm -hmm. this would determine a Picard, in, in some field, yeah. this would determine a Picard extension over that field. So with that field of concepts. So if you could find a point uh, in the reals uh, of this equation, then you could find the Picard extension over the reals, which is what you want. But you cannot find it because it's, uh, it's like that. So, so in uh, the parameterized theory, mm -hmm. um, Rubel, Johnson, and Reinhardt uh, proved a theorem that was, let's see, how many? Um, they put a condition on the ground field that a certain property hold. When you move to the parameterized theory, the condition on the ground field tells you, answers the question, will the will GA, the additive group, be realized as a, as a Galois group over the ground field? The ground field satisfies this condition of JRR, mm -hmm. I call it then yes, so if you're moving the ground field, if you have L instead of K, map T tilde into L, mm -hmm. then um, it, this seems to me to be a setup open to the inverse question of is a certain group, algebraic group, realizable as a Galois group over a given field. In this case, you have this equation that would um, but this is a um, determined. Let's see. This right. This, this, this is a characteristic zero, R, right? Uh, that in ground field K, then you have a P Carbessio extension. With the in the PPP theory, if this condition of JRR is satisfied, yes, then it's an equational condition, definable condition of the ground field, so to speak. Then the then the uh, the group the additive group of the Field is realizable over that graph. So it, Jerry Kabasik um, asked the question: uh, can, What if we change the ground field over which we're trying to realize algebraic groups from C of X to another field? And you, in other words, you vary the ground field and ask: When is uh, a certain algebraic group realizable over this field? Uh -huh. So it, it sort of seemed to me that this was a set up for that question. If you but change this is... K, if you can move K. Can you move K? You had, well, you moved K to L at one point. You had... Uh, I mean, moving... moving, moving. So, so you see that the groupoid, the groupoid is, the, is, 
the groupoids correspond to, to covers. Okay? Yeah. So the, the groupoid is, is completely determined. Um, the groupoid is completely determined. Uh, I mean, once you specify the cover, which is the same as specifying the equation. So, so the only so, so I mean so so the way this could be relevant here is, is if you know that if you if you know somehow that that your equation that the uh, the Galois group of your equation after your base change is yeah. GA, and then you want to know if 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 it's actually definable over the the field before your base change. But but I mean the thing is that the isomorphism. Um, well, first the, the isomorphism class of the of the Galois group is is determined. I mean, the isomorphism class of the Galois group over the the base change uh, is determined by the groupoid. So the only, the thing that could vary is the, is the forms, is, is various forms of the of the same group. What, what is what would be a formulation of the inverse problem? The, the, inver yeah, the inverse problem is just, uh, just, just fine. I mean, but it's not. Uh, uh, well, actually, so given a group boy, when is it? Okay, so what uh, okay, does it correspond to? Okay, so I guess. To some uh, internal cover. Yeah. I mean, you it's actually have, lem have the lemma that they are corresponding, right? Yeah. Yes, but yeah. but the problem is uh, right. So so what you know is that if you have a so if you have a particular groupoid, so you can any, construct yeah, a cover. Any groupoid, you can construct a cover. But, but when so under this Even correspondence, what kind of groupoids give you this picardesian uh, interpretation or whatever it is? Yeah. So they, they say, uh, 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 they say no, 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 that's but, the question. Uh, right? but that's could, the, that's I mean, the English problem question, right? What right, kind of group boys correspond to Picard oh, Internal cover. Internal cover when T is ACF. Right. right. But yeah. I mean you could also ask this uh, for instance for Tanakian categories. Right. So you have right. you have a, you true. have a, you have a group, yeah. you look at its category of representations and you ask uh, yeah. and you ask is this category of representations mm -hmm. Realized as as you know right. differential modules. Uh, right. so when, uh, when, when would there I, you find yeah. the So so I don't think it, so I think it, this question would be easier to answer than than the one about internal covers because really yeah because wow. internal in, the internal cover that you construct I mean you don't know that there is anything linear about it at all so uh, I mean okay eventually it's equivalent it's an equivalent question but but somehow I think thinking about this in in terms of I mean, it's, it's somehow more concrete to think about the category of representations than, than, than I think that in, 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 uh, in Maggot's uh, introductory differential Gala theory book, mm -hmm. uh, towards, towards the end, he, he, he starts out from, okay, so if I have a Picard-Bessio extension, I know there is a torsion for the group. Right. So to, right. to, to get a Picard-Bessio extension with a given group, you can start out with G, the, the K points of G, uh, or, or, and you know, try to put a derivation on it that right. that, that eventually makes it as a differential ring be be the Picard Bessel ring. Right. Just because algebraically it still has to be the coordinate ring over the group. So so you might think that if you start out from this abstract and item category, uh, you'll get the group from it, and you, the the question might end up being equivalent to can I can I put a differential structure on top? That. Is that it? Yeah. So actually, I mean, if if you're so yeah. so a special case is if your group just, happens to be a group, yeah. then it's very easy to describe the or an internal cover. Uh, so oh. if if you if you just have G, which is a definable group in just not just not just in ACF in any theory, mm -hmm. define, definable group in uh, T, whatever it is. Uh, so then an internal cover. It, it, sorry, a stupid question. It, so a group is a group point? Yes, a group is a group point with one one object. Yeah. Ah, so for, okay. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so 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 all the morphisms are actually the elements. Okay. Right. Yes. But you're intending it to be an actual definable group, not group point? Yes, so if it's a definable group, group. and definable group point is very similar, it's just a bit oh, more okay. complicated. Okay. Yeah. So definable group, uh, so an internal cover corresponding to G. Uh, 
is the following. So, so you take, uh, again, you take two sorts, so x and c, where a c is a model of t. Okay. And x is a g torsor. So maybe the, the structure that you have is you have a function, so you have you have two sorts, again two sets. One of them is just is just t. The, the, the usual structure of t is here. And here the structure is uh, you have a map mu from g cos x to x. Okay? Maybe I should put it here. And and the theory just says that that this action makes x into a into a principal homogeneous space over over g. So uh, such that so an action such that uh, the induced map from g cross x to x cross x uh, is an isomorphism. Um, Right. Okay. So, but but the, the problem is that it's all. Uh, I mean, this correspondence. It's it's up to equivalence. So, um, and the equivalence in the case of in the case of uh, of covers is is by interpretability over over t. So, and and uh, okay. And then by interpretability is in the sense of also eliminating. Eliminating imaginaries. So, uh, so what you have to do um, to see this, the structure more explicitly is, is is somehow to eliminate imaginaries from in this theory, and then you start essentially seeing the Tanakem. I mean, in the case of if T was ACF, then you start seeing the the Tanakem category corresponding to G. So, one way to eliminate imaginaries is is to add. Um, to add to add the uh, representations of G and their and the corresponding projective uh, spaces uh, with with the tensor structure. Uh, that's yeah. so yeah. I mean, so this looks simple, but in fact, it, it codes a lot of things. Suppose you had. I guess I'm always thinking of the parameterized theory. <laughs> That's what I know better. But um, suppose you want to ask the question. Uh, I would like to find, be able to decide. I I want G A to be realizable over a, a field that has finite transcendence degree over C or Q or whatever, whatever constant you like. Um, if you could put a so you could ch you change the field. You somehow need a condition that's workable. Um, we have conditions that Michael Singer has gotten for when structural conditions on when GA is realized. But what if I ask? I want finite transcendence degree fields because I want these to be real uh, to be concrete fields of analytic functions. Mm -hmm. uh, over C of X, but I guess yeah, then, yeah. Then, then I think it's a, I think it's a slightly different, different question, question because is uh, I mean the the problem is yeah. there are these examples right that that you look at. You are hoping that 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 there is a definable family of Galois groups which are yeah. all different, but but there are yeah. these examples that show that that this cannot be the case, right? Because if you look at this, uh, X prime is equal to alpha. Dot x, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so you get. I mean, oh, the I family would sorry, get is you, the family you, you would get would have yeah. somehow uh, finite groups of arbitrary large right. uh, right. size, and and that's very bad. Right. Right. And uh, yeah, in fact, I mean, the, yeah. Yeah. So I mean I don't know, but but anyway, it's uh, I think it's so you, such a you different. That, uh, uh, you probably would not move the base field. 
it's I don't, it's, it's not about the, it's not about moving the base field. I think yeah. here it's about moving the the equation. Uh, I don't know. For me, it's uh, no, different. No, no, if you want, mm. you move the equation and, the, in a sense, and if the equation has uh, coefficients in uh, Q of X, uh -huh. or Q of X and T, in parameter theory, mm -hmm. then um, you take all equa you take all matrices with entries in that field. And then ask for the extension field on which a certain group is realizable. So you're changing the base from from uh, from Q of X or C of X. But do you, I mean do, do you know that after you pass to the I mean do you know what what is the isomorphism class after you pass to the algebraic closure? And because I mean I mean if, if you know in the groupoid the groupoid is is connected right so. Uh, when you go to the algebraic closure, uh, they all become isomorphic. So it's, yeah, a, it's a family of, of groups which are isomorphic over uh, over the algebraic closure. Yeah. So it's all. I mean, all of them are going to be forms of the same group. Yeah. So if I mean, if this is the kind of of situation that you are looking at, then, then it might be related, I guess. But yeah, yeah. Uh, I want to move the base. Yeah. Does, does the constants or the uh, all, no, all okay. mm -hmm. Yeah, and then and then uh, and then looking at these various groups would, would correspond to looking at at sets of objects in that in the corresponding you know uh, the yeah, set of yeah, yeah. the set of mm -hmm. uh, you know, of objects defined over that field. The, um, the next thing. I remember just doing this. Well, I mean, actually, I'm. I'm a, yeah, I, I mean, I'm still. I'm still. Uh, Will you be able to do some sprawling more? Yeah, I think that that should be that should be easy. I mean. Uh, <laughs> what? Carlos. Sorry. I just no, that's a, that's a, what? Or, or that's partial, a quite partial. a different or partial <laughs> differential field. There's no Tanakian category. No. Yeah, but that, that's the thing. I mean, this is a, no, this a, <laughs> that's the nice thing about doing it with model theory. You you don't depend on the Tanakian formalism at all, really, with this right. language. Just, just on just yeah, on the level of analogy. Mm -hmm. I like that. That's nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's right. How how difficult do you think it would be in, in, in principle to try to take this say say limit it to just strongly normal extensions or something, and you know try to turn it back into concrete equations? But where by concrete I mean yeah. as concrete as the usual Tanakian theory. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, uh, yeah, well, can I write down my my my, my functors and my groupoids? No, the thing is that how do you get back the equation? Suppose I give you a group, right? Or even an internal cover, how do you get back to the equation? Oh, I think that's difficult. But I'm asking the. Uh, the that's what you're asking. No, no, no I'm asking no, no. how how do I understand a strongly normal theory? Yeah. Really, using this language. No, I mean, okay, I mean, so so this is the, this is the same as how do you understand? Isn't this an How do you understand groupoids? Just algebraic groupoids, where the where the the, the group of automorphisms of an object is is not linear, but but say uh, right. an abelian variety or something yeah. like that. So uh, I mean, what what corresponds to a representation theory of, of well, what is representation theory of an abelian variety? I mean, well, I, I don't know that there is. Pretty annoying. Yeah. Well, yeah. So it's not really having. It's a differential algebraic group. <laughs> uh, <laughs> then sorry? you have a representation. As a differential algebraic group, it does. Ah. Yeah, but I don't. Sure. No, it did. But that would not be the strongly normal. Thing. Right, right. I mean, I, I, I would also be interested in understanding the representation theory of an abelian variety, whatever that means. But, uh, you know, if I just wanted to take uh, the, the, the Weierstrass equation for an elliptic curve yeah. and, that, and, and see what, I, I know what the answer has to be, but just, just kind of see with this approach what the groupoid is. You know, say, 
analytic curve over the F9. But so, 